Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. Now, as you know, uh, we have the pleasure of having Professor Stefania Barca to end our first day of our conference. Uh, she's going to give her keynote talk. Um, Stefania Barca is an environmental historian who specializes on the labor environment gender nexus in the industrial era. She has obtained her PhD in economic history in Italy in 1997 and has held visiting positions at Yale University, UC Berkeley and Lund University. Uh, she has been a senior researcher here at SEJ, at the Center for Social Studies, since 2009, where she has co-founded and coordinated the Ecology and Society Lab. And now she is currently Zenstrom Professor in Climate Change Leadership at the University of Uppsala in Sweden, from where she, she's going to speak today. Um, Stefania has published extensively on the environmental impact of industry in the Anthropocene, the relationship between labor and the environment, environmental justice, degrowth, commoning, just transition, and more broadly on feminist political ecology. And today she is going to present her latest book, uh, which was published last year in 2020 at Cambridge University Press, called Forces of Reproduction, Notes for a Counter-Hegemonic Anthropocene. In this book, drawing on a materialistic or feminist analysis of the world, Stefania Barca proposes a counter narrative to the hegemonic one around the Anthropocene. She questions the exclusionary and normative character of the dominant narrative, and thus she challenges to think about the very foundations of the capitalist industrial modernity. And in doing so, in bringing forward this narrative of justice, she makes visible and accounted for those who have been removed, silenced, denied existence, historically denied his existence. These other than master subjects, as she, as she calls it, uh, subjects and beings are what she calls the forces of reproduction. Those who do the work of sustaining life, both in its material and immaterial needs. These life enhancing forces are for Stefania, and I'm quoting, a queer political subject and a political subject in the making. By focusing on them, the aim of this book is to dismantle the master's house in what is, I think, a very powerful reference to Audre Lorde. And uh, the, dismantling the master's house requires and doing what we call the Anthropocene. And this couldn't be more in tune with the, the purpose of our conference. And this is also the title of Stefania's talk today. And I couldn't be more happier to, to welcome you and to pass the floor to you. Uh, thank you so much once again for being here with us today. And the floor is, is all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mariana and Antonio and everybody uh, who is uh, here, still here at this uh, late time of the day after a very, very interesting, very intense uh, day that we have spent together. And so our, our brains are perhaps a bit, uh, yeah, worn out, but uh, I, I hope that we can still um, have some, um, I'm, I'm sure we will still have some interesting uh, conversation so i look forward to also to your to your feedback uh so um what i'm going to present i'm going to share my screen now and i'm going to present um yes as what mariana was already uh announcing uh which is the um, sort of a um, of a short overview of the argument of my book uh, but before going into the book, uh, let me just uh, let me start from where um, the book itself started from me, for me in the story in this story placed in uh, the state of Pará, Pará in Brazil, and specifically in an uh, extractive reserve called Prayalta Piranheira. Um, extractive result for, for those who are not familiar is a specific kind of uh, natural protected area uh, where uh, protection of, of nature does not uh, come with the expulsion of human beings, but on the other, uh, in, in, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it comes uh, uh, with uh, human labor, the human labor of taking care of the forest, of taking care of non-human nature in a, in a relationship of mutual um, coexistence. And so um, this, this, uh, this is the story of um, Maria do Espirito Santo and uh, Zé Claudio Ribeiro da Silva, 
to um, to present activists who were um, um, they they had contributed to uh, to create the the Rizex of Prialta back in the mid '90s, where they lived and uh, taking care of a, a plot of uh, of Brazil nut uh, uh, stand and uh, the, the castanha. Uh, the tree with which uh, they had uh, uh, been um, raised, the, the tree with which they were familiar since they uh, um, since since the, when they were kids, and uh, the forest, the Castanheira, is the um, place with which they identified uh, as being part of. Maria and Zé Claudio were awarded the, the uh, United Nations uh, Hero of the Forest uh, Prize in uh, 2011 after being killed by, um, by local uh, landowners who were, um, uh, this was actually really a hate crime because they were very much hated by those who do, did not identify with their life project and because they were um, actively protecting the forest from illegal um, timber trafficking. So they were actively denouncing um, illegal uh, extraction of timber from their reserve. And, and this is the reason why they were targeted as enemies of, uh, of progress, uh, enemies of, of of economic growth, of economic development, of modernity, if you wish. And I will go back into that. To that. Um, so the reason why this story, this story uh, holds so many um, aspects, so many dimensions that are really important to an understanding of uh, the alternative modernities that are present within the Anthropocene. So it speaks to all the things that we have been talking about so far, about the rejection, rejecting the universalistic uh, concept of humanity that uh, is incorporated in the hegemonic Anthropocene uh, story. Uh, and so uh, by... Um, I, I came to know about the story from Felipe Milanes, um, a then uh, Brazilian reporter who, who then, uh, um, who I met in, in Coimbra as a graduate student in a program in political ecology, and who uh, had met Zé Claudio and Maria when um, he was visiting uh, the Rizex of Prialta and um, and had uh, interviewed had the privilege of interviewing them and recording their uh, their voices their um, their life stories uh, as told by themselves and also these pictures that you see here are all from uh, Felipe's uh, work um, and so this is. Um, an overview of uh, the book. The book was born out of an urge for making sense of the, the fact that not only of their story, of, of Maria's and the Claudio's story, but also of what I saw as a scandalous disconnection between their story and the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative. Um, so that's why the book adopts a feminist perspective um, in the sense of, uh, in the deep sense of making um, uh, visible what is, uh, what has been denied historical representation and denied historical agency. Um, but it's not just a feminist perspective that I try, uh, I try to merge the feminist perspective with the historical materialist approach. Uh, and, and I do that by through uh, the hypothesis that the history of the Anthropocene consists in a struggle of the other than master subjects for producing life, a struggle that opposes the unlimited expansion of the master model of humanity. And these other than master subjects are what I call the forces of reproduction. 
So the book tries to answer the question, why are the forces of reproduction not accounted for in the hegemonic uh, Anthropocene narrative? Do they count for nothing? Uh, paraphrasing a famous feminist uh, book uh, by Marilyn Waring. Uh, do they count for nothing in the historical balance sheet of human earth relationship? And what do we miss by staging them off from the narratives of humanity and the environment? And these are, uh, um, as I said, these are, uh, these are feminist questions, but they also, they require more than feminist answers. Because uh, questioning the, the, the exclusionary, ex exclusionary um, and also normative character of the Anthropocene narrative, uh, making visible the alternate humanities that inhabit this era, requires to adopt an uh, expanded and, and radically intersectional version of feminism, one capable of weaving together ecological, decolonial, and uh, class and, uh, and post-human perspectives. So the book is divided in two parts. Part uh, one, um, a master's narrative, is a detailed analysis of the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative, um, which I, uh, mm, I um, take from uh, uh, a video, an, a welcome video that was projected at the UN uh, United Nations uh, Earth Summit of Rio de Janeiro 2012. Uh, known as the Rio Plus 20 uh, Summit, and a narrative which is now incorporated in the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative. Um, and the, here I, I argue that the conceptual basis for this, uh, this narrative is the identification of humanity with a master model of, of uh, capitalist uh, industrial modernity an expression by which I mean a specific type of modernity, that which considers the forces of production, uh, aka Western science and industrial technology, as the key driver of, of human progress and well-being. Um, this is a narrative that uh, comes uh, with, uh, with the emergence of capitalism, but it doesn't coincide with it. It has also been subsequently assumed as a universal model and maintained by state socialist regimes in different uh, contexts. Part two of the book, Undoing the Anthropocene, is devoted to displace the hegemony of this narrative and let counter-hegemonic visions of modernity to emerge. Combining decolonial, feminist, historical materialist, and post humanist tools, it develops a detailed, uh, detailed critiques of the four levels of denial of the hegemonic Anthropocene na narrative. The first is uh, uh, that of racial and colonial relations. Um, and here, the Denial consists in uh, um, representing um, um, civilization, the only civilization that matters is Western civilization. And so uh, canceling out any other, any other form of, uh, of human existence. Um, the second level of denial is that, that of sex and gender relations. And here um, the denial consists in um, um, considering care and reproductive work as, uh, um, as devoid of historical agency, as, uh, as, as non-mattering. Uh, the third level of denial is class relations. Um, and here the claim is that social inequalities and, uh, and exploitation do not matter to, to the Anthropocene. They are not relevant to an understanding of, um, of the planetary crisis. And the fourth level of denial is that of interspecies relations. And here the claim is that the non-human living world does not matter because the Anthropocene narrative only gives uh, relevance 
to uh, to geology, to to the atmosphere, to the uh, to the earth, uh, um, the forces of uh, uh, the inanimate forces of geology and climate, uh, whereas it uh, underrepresents or completely um, uh, leaves com completely out. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> the crisis of biodiversity and uh, and uh, the other than human living world. So taken together, these four critiques help us undo the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative and open our view to a multiplicity of counter-hegemonic ways of living through the planetary crisis. So in the rest of my presentation, I'm going to briefly summarize each section, highlighting the aspects that are most related, directly related to the story of Maria and the Claudio. Uh, first, however, let me um, give you a sense of the theoretically, theoretical background for my work, that of uh, material ecofeminism. Uh, because the forces of reproduction actually comes from uh, this tradition of uh, this particular tradition of feminist thought and practice, materialist ecofeminism, which uh, formed at the intersection of feminism with Marxist thought, with postcolonialism, and with ecology. So, but this was never a plain and simple, uh, uh, an easy intersection or a plain and simple juxtaposition. This was always a critical, critical intersection, a terrain of contestation and, and struggle. Um, and here, the, the, my main reference is uh, Australian philosopher Val Plumwood. Uh, because she um, uh, allows me to develop a critique of the mod modern concept of uh, humanity or modernity as we know it and, uh, and to rethink it. Uh, Plumwood sees, uh, saw the ecological crisis as a product of the historical global hegemony of this master subject, Western moderni modernity. Uh, described uh, and she described the Western modernity as uh, premised on four main hierarchical dualisms that are also related to each other in various ways. We would say to, uh, today, uh, uh, we, we might say intersected in various ways. First is the male-female dualism, and this leads towards the sexual division of labor the appropriation of reproductive and care work in society, and so to unequal gender relations. Second dualism is the mind-body dualism, which in my understanding of Plumwood's work uh, is also deeply imbricated with uh, property relations, with science and technology, uh, with um, with management, the concept of management or mastering, if you want, as opposed to uh, what is considered too inferior to them, uh, manual labor. Um, so the mind-body uh, dualism reflects in this uh, in this uh, division of, between uh, uh, intellectual and manual labor. Manual labor identified, of course, with the proletariat. And so this leads towards social inequality, privilege, and class relations. The, the third dualism is that between humanity and nature, and this leads towards human supremacy, uh, towards the, the, the non-human living nature, and to to, and and uh, and human supremacy uh, over the geosphere and bio biosphere uh, in general, and so to unequal species species relations, and the fourth is that between civilized and savage, which has uh, led historically to racism and to colonial relations. So the master subject of modernity, according to Plumwood, is coded as male, mind, human, civilized. It is the owner of the means of production, the subject of law, the producer of thought and of scientific knowledge, 
And these qualities distinguish the master from the non-master subjects, which are who are coded as female, uh, aka reproductive body, aka manual labor, the like the labor of slaves, of peasants, of of uh, of, of workers in general, and as nature, uh, and as uh, nature and uh, and savage, so as animals and and the colonized. So the master needs the other the master for its uh, survival but it denies their humanity. It pushes them out of the realm of history proper. Uh, and this, is, this appears very clearly when considering the hegemonic narrative of the Anthropocene uh, and claims to be the only, uh, the Anthropos. No? The master subject claims to represent humanity. Uh, for Plumwood, the different potentiality for humanity comes from an egalitarian, uh, non-hierarchical ordering of difference, and from not from denying difference, but from their uh, non-hierarchical ordering, reordering, and from egalitarian relations, including including between human and non-human life. And this is what she called. Um, uh, a non-master humanity, or we could say a non-master modernity. Building on ecofeminist thought, I conceptualize the forces of production, uh, of reproduction, sorry, as embodying the other than master qualities. They are those female body, nature, uh, savage subjects who have been made to serve the master, to provide for it, uh, so they are the denied and backgrounded agencies embedded in the Anthropocene, those who do not matter to the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative, but they do matter to um, the history of this uh, epoch, as, as the story of, of Maria and the Claudio shows. So my hypothesis is that the, the dualism between production and reproduction, which is a... Uh, let's say, um, the main target of, of feminist um, thought, uh, this dualism is a reflection of all four dualisms uh, um, that we have seen before, because production becomes identified with, um, with uh, either capitalist or state-led accumulation and growth, which free rides upon uh, the uh, care and reproductive work, uh, using an expression by Nancy Fraser. In this perspective, the productive reproductive dualism and its uh, hierarchical coding is what generates ecological crisis. First, by dividing human interaction with non human nature into two artificially separated realms, the realm of accumulation or extraction and the realm of subsistence or care work. And second, by uh, reclaiming the first realm uh, as hierarchically superior as insofar the realm of production as hierarchically superior to reproduction insofar as it is the only way to achieve wealth. And so, to save humanity from scarcity. And this is the basic concept that underpins most of um, economic growth narratives and you know, the, the key element of, uh, of um, the, the narrative of modernity, um, the overcoming of natural limits and of scarcity. So the superiority of production uh, intended as accumulation and extraction over reproduction intended as subsistence and care and the ability of the productive forces to bring about the, the so-called greater common good for humanity, even if by free riding upon the reproductive forces of both human and non-human nature, this is what justifies or at least compensates for the ills of master modernity. So rethinking reproduction as the ensemble of historically determined subjectivities performing active resistance to the master model 
and 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 for this uh, agency holding a revolutionary potential equal to that of so-called productive forces or uh, or else industrial uh, forces and uh, including wages labor this is the uh, let's say the key um, provocation that I uh, develop in uh, in the book with the concept of forces of reproduction uh, and this I see this as a force capable of realizing true true wealth and uh, through through human potential with and not against non-human nature the politi and this was the political vision and praxis of Maria do Espirito Santo and and the Claudio, of course, and many others in the counter hegemonic Anthropocene. Um, and we we ought to also to consider that these subjects are getting self conscious as a part of a global movement, the global movement that calls itself the climate justice movement, into which many different struggles and many different movements of the world uh, converge in rejecting the master model of modernity. Okay, so let's go a little bit into the the four levels, uh, the, the critique of these four levels of denial. The first is sex, gender, while the, the, the narrative, the hegemonic Anthropocene narrative is uh, present, is represented as gender neutral, but this is just a discursive dispositive that hides um, the, the sexism that is constituted, the patriarchy, the heteropatriarchal order that is constitutive of capitalist industrial modernity, as, as many feminist uh, scholars have argued. Uh, the conceptual basis for the hegemonic narrative of the Anthropocene is the identification of humanity with, with, uh, with capitalist industrial modernity. And, uh, um, and this model is now turning into a master model of sustainability, no? the model of the sustainable uh, development goals of, uh, of green growth, uh, which is again based on the hegemony of the forces of production, Western knowledge and Western science and industrial technologies, uh, and on the denial of the forces of reproduction, like those of indigenous, black, peasant um, uh, knowledge and practices, um, and in general, more broadly, of the, the, the forces of subsistence and care and commoning uh, labor. Material ecofeminist scholars have claimed that reproductive, as reproductive laborers, women in capitalist modernity had not only embodied but also counteracted ecological uh, contradictions. Uh, ecofeminism has pointed to the fact that women have, in many cases, um, as a as a feminist saying goes, organized resistance from the kitchen table. Feminist thought invites to to conceptualizing the alternate agency that are inscribed within and against capitalist modernity, and it invites to consider. Uh, women's environmental activism as a form of, uh, uh, as a struggle related to the reproductive labor to which women historically have been, uh, have been uh, um, connected in all societies, but specifically in capitalist societies in specific ways. Um, so, uh, women's uh, environmental activism, it's not seen as inherent in women's nature, but as related to women's work. This is the materialist ecofeminist perspective. Uh, and this would explain why women worldwide have been at the forefront of urban farming, tree hugging, tree planting actions, anti-nuclear and anti-mining mobilizations opposition to destructive mega projects, to water privatization, to toxic landfills, and a number of similar um, actions. Uh, Ecofeminist scholar Carolyn Merchant calls this agency Earth Care. 
and uh, even if this has been criticized as an essentialist claim, uh, as I as I showed before, by by linking this 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 um, earth care to uh, women's work um, rather than to women's nature is a, a fundamentally an anti-essentialist argument. Uh, the point here is not the um, it's not the human, women's nature, but the practice of care labor. So, and, and in fact, um, even if ecofeminism is born as a, as a predominantly women's uh, move, movement, you don't need to be a woman to share its vision and praxis, nor do all women embrace it either. Uh, but the multitude of collectives that struggle to defend the principles of commoning, of eco-sufficiency and global environmental justice in different parts of the world cannot be identified as women's movements. Um, so uh, there is a multiplicity of subjects who recognize themselves in these, in these struggles. And this is why I consider Maria and the Claudio as uh, as representatives of the forces of reproduction. So uh, the second level of the second denial the level of denial is that of uh, race and coloniality because the the, the flat ontology of uh, of the humanity versus nature that that underpins the welcome the the, the anthropocene uh, narrative misses completely the point that the we subject of, of capitalist industrial modernity has been defined through the exclusion of racialized people and their ontologies from the realm of humanity proper and it, it forgets that the ecological crisis has emerged from the annihilation of alternate possibilities of inhabitation of the earth, such as those practiced by uh, Black and Indigenous people who were subject to uh, Western colonization and to the epistemicide and, and annihilation of their worlds. Um, so in if you if you look at the you have a, we have already discussed this abundantly today but uh it's it's important to repeat that um in the hegemonic anthropocene narrative indigenous and black histories are completely irrelevant and they, they don't matter they they are not they don't matter to the understanding of the interactions between humans and the planet and so this means that colonization, enslavement, racialization, uh, as well as all that, ca that came afterward, like the current uh, trade agreements and other globalization disasters and ongoing forms of, of racialization and colonization, uh, that all this simply disappears as uh, intrinsic components of the modern world as if these were not constitutive of modernity. Um, and so with this discursive um, dispositive, the Anthropocene narrative makes it seem like the modern world is, uh, is what is to be saved and sustained through sustainable development rather than radically changed and transformed. So my argument in this part is that undoing this uh, racist colonial character of the Anthropocene implies to make visible the struggles of Black and Indigenous people uh, and of peasants and of many others throughout the history of modernity. Uh, in the context where Maria and the Claudio uh, lived, these uh, struggles are represented by uh, what the, um, the Brazilian constitution calls the traditional, so-called traditional people, uh, chief among them, the indigenous, Afro-descendants and mestizo communities and their struggles to, um, that have been partially successful um, in uh, um, being incorporated in the Brazilian constitution, the principle, uh, the right of these so-called traditional communities to, um, to have uh, their uh, um, life projects recognized as connected in, in, in inextricably connected to their territories. 
and uh, the the extractive reserve uh, where the Claudia Maria lived is uh, what is a is a product of this history of struggles from these movements in the uh, back in the 1970s and 80s, especially uh, with um, with an alliance that was called the Alliance of Forest People, uh, an alliance of um, of uh, in specifically of indigenous and uh, um, and rubber tappers and other extractivist uh, populations, communities of uh, the Amazon forest uh, uh, that were struggling together to, um, to uh, claim their right to the forest. Um, and also in the name of this principle of Florestania, of uh, which I translate um, as forest citizenship, uh, as opposed to citizenship, which in itself contests the idea that citizenship is something related to the urban world, right? And, and not only that, but the concept itself, itself recognizes the polis as a more than human community made of not only the people, but also the forest itself. Uh, and this is a very, very, uh, very modern, uh, concept, if you accept a non-master concept of modernity that emerged from the struggles of so-called traditional people in the 1980s. And here, uh, this is uh, re directly related to, uh, to the level of, uh, of class, uh, to the denial of class as relevant to, uh, to the ecological crisis. Uh, and the, the, the claim that social inequalities and exploitation do not matter to understand the ecological crisis. She commands, and the, um, that was mentioned before in, in um, in the presentation by Patricia and uh, and the um, movement of rubber tappers, actually the union, uh, the trade union of rubber tappers, uh, rub rubber tappers workers in the Amazon, was actually um, in absolutely central to the alliance of forest people and to the. Um, uh, to the concept concept of forest and ship and all and also to the um, yeah to the institution of the extractive uh, reserves so in in uh, the working class or proletariat uh, and and the the planetary crisis um, the claim I make in the book is that the proletariat and the planetary crisis the ecological crisis they originate from a unique global pro historical process, the process of enclosure or uh, privatization, if you want, the accumulation of wealth through the violent separation of people from their means of subsistence. And this is a claim that uh, historical materialism has uh, long made the claim that the enclosures are at the roots of social inequality and exploitation, but they, uh, but historical materialism traditionally did not look at uh, also the ecological crisis as a consequence of that, of those enclosures, of the, the violent separation of humans from nature as a means of subsistence for the sake of capital accumulation and for the sake of extraction of value. So this is the, the same process that creates proletarians and ecological crisis. But at the same time, historically, proletarians, uh, the proletarians who have emerged from this process have also resisted the same process through a number of struggles. And, and uh, the struggles that scholars today recognize uh, as uh, labor environmentalism, a specific kind of environmentalism, very different from the environmentalism of uh, the uh, urban middle classes. Um, and of course, the story of Chico Mendes is a very important example of that. Yeah, the, the, the forged in resisting also the master version of modernity, also by undoing this hyper separation between humans and human and non-human nature. And, um, and this is what um, um, I see in the story of uh, Maria and the Claudio in the picture, you can see the Claudio symbolically protecting um, 
uh, Brazil nut tree uh, uh, that uh, he was particularly um, uh, affectionate to, uh, that, uh, a tree that he had named Majestade, uh, a tree that uh, to him represented all the, the, living, um, uh, the living force of the forest and the importance of the struggles that he, uh, he was, um, uh, to to to, who, to which he was uh, he was uh, willing to give his life. Uh, so uh, in the book, I developed the hypothesis that by by listening to the interviews and um, and to to how the Claudio and Maria themselves described their work uh, in the extractive reserve, I developed the concept of interspecies labor. Um, in the sense of, or, or, and first of all, of interspecies being uh, through labor uh, by uh, kind of um, re re-elaborating Mar Marx's concept of, uh, of species being in a way that um, uh, realizing the true human potential, uh, what, what the Claudia Maria show us is that realizing true human potential comes uh, together with rather than out of um, non-human nature. And, um, and so I will leave you uh, here because I think this uh, has been, uh, um, Andrew this morning already spoke a lot about this uh, concept and I would also, uh, and I was, you know, I would, I think that this is something that Maria and the Claudio had uh, already theorized and practiced in their own lives. So thank you very much.